going to be uh, right down to the checkered flag to see who's going to take the victory on this one. Bobby Rahal's involved in quite a few cars battling for position further down there. You can see how close they are. Parker Johnston is in the middle of that little group. He's running down in 12th position. Christian Fritty Fulgur will be riding with him in 9th position. All these guys are two laps down at the moment, and uh, including Robbie Gordon, of course. He's also two laps down, but still going very quickly indeed. His last uh, lap, let's just see as he went around, 31.384. And still at the fastest of all of the front runners out there at the moment. So Robbie Gordon's really charging. They've got a great setup to finish the race. It's a shame they rather lost their way in the early part of the race. Yeah, Alan Langridge there and uh, Steve Connor, the two engineers on that car. Uh, all the along, of course, with Dario Franchitti, and now working with Robbie Gordon. It's, uh, it's a pretty different. It's difficult for the engineers really to to get together, working with a different driver at this late stage of the season. There is Robbie Gordon in the pits. Uh, Gordon into the pits. Well, uh, I wonder if uh, fuel. Just needs a splash of fuel. He's also having a change of tyres. Max Pappis is in the pits at the same time. Uh, Max uh, having made, that's his eighth stop in this long distance race. And that drops him down to 13th position. So with 25 laps to go as they cross the line. Still Goodman with the edge at the moment. And uh, Greg Moore's just got past a Ferran. That is the change for second place. And Greg Moore sneaks past Gilles de Ferran. But has he got the pace to go chasing after Maurizio Goodman? That's the big question. Same equipment for both these drivers. They've both got Mercedes power, they've got the Firestone tyres, but uh, Greg Moore is now chasing after Maurizio Gutemann, and can he close what is now a four-second gap between himself and the Brazilian, who's won one race. Greg Moore has won two races this year, and Gilles de Ferran is now beginning to suffer as Jimmy Vassar just blows past the Walker racing, the Valvoline car, and it looks as though Mark Blundell is going to be able to do that as well. There's the gap, there is Mauricio Gujimin. Here is Greg Moore in second position and Jimmy Vassar and Mark Blundell also moving out to overtake Gilles de Ferran, who clearly is struggling now with, uh, what, uh, 23 laps remaining. He's back all of a sudden from second to fifth place. Oh, it's just fallen away from him again, as it seems to have done so many times this year, just when it looked as though de Ferran was going to be able to win the first race of the year for him. Mark Blundell takes it up into fourth position. And still Guzman leads with the gap back to Greg Moore, still at around four seconds. He's maintaining the gap. It almost identical lap times last time around for both Guzman and Moore. And if Guzman can maintain that pace, he's surely heading for victory number two this year following the streets of Vancouver. It could be here in California for Guzman. Nothing Maurizio Gujamin could do about it. Greg Moore just blasted past him. He's now taken over the lead. The Gujamin's come into the pits, so it's actually a problem for the Brazilian. We saw Greg Moore just pull up behind Gujamin, blast past him. So you can see the blisters from here. We don't even need the close-up. There are bad blisters on the right rear of Gujamin's car there. And look at this, Mark Blundell's trying to snatch what is now second place from Jimmy Vassar. As disappointment hits his teammate Maurizio Gujamin, Mark Blundell is now trying to get something back and they cannot get this car fired up again now. Gujamin's got more problems in the pits. This is dropping him well down the order on what bitter disappointment for Maurizio Gujamin. Look at this first, though, Jimmy Vassar watching behind on his onboard camera. We can see Mark Blundell closing right up behind. And Blundell chasing for second place. He's got a great opportunity as they get into the traffic here. And Blundell's just got to try and get the toe. Dennis Vitolo there in the middle of this group. And Vassar got past him. Now, finally coming out of the corner, Blundell will, will be able to get through as well. But he lost quite a lot of ground there. This is a replay of the pass that Greg Moore executed to take the lead of this race. He just closed up behind Gujamin, picked up the draft, and then Gujamin backed off and slowed it down and headed back into the pits because of the blistered right rear tyre. So Gujamin had to come into the pits and make that stop, and Greg Moore is now leading. Yeah, but we've seen several times this afternoon, have we not, uh, Ben Edwards, that Greg Moore has had blistering problems with that right rear tyre, that same Firestone tyre. Yeah, and absolutely, Jimmy Vassar now is maybe wanting to see if he can keep the pressure on. Only 1.2 seconds between those two last time around. Uh, slightly higher as they cross the line there, 1.6 seconds with the traffic intervening. And Mark Blundell still behind Jimmy Vassar. He lost out in that last go with uh, the traffic around Dennis Vitolo. And Mark has therefore, in fact, he's still behind Vitolo by the looks of things. So he hasn't actually got past him yet. And that is affecting his chances of taking second place. Or unless it was somebody else, it may well have been one of the other slower cars that is still out there but there was definitely a car between uh, Vassar and Blundell last time round and uh, 
And in fact, it's Max Pappis, so it wasn't uh, Vitolo he was still following. And Max Pappis and Bladel still had to find a way past him. Moore now has just 13 laps to go, slightly less than that as he comes out of turn four and, uh, in fact, out of turn two, heads along the back stretch there. Moore's advantage, 1.4 seconds over Jimmy Vassar and Mark Blundell. The three of them still in with the shout here. Well, Bobby Rainwall's actually overtaken Gilles de Ferran. Bobby Rain running, running very well indeed. He's uh, about 15 seconds behind Blundell, but he's up in the fourth position now, ahead of Gilles de Ferran, who's running so well not so long ago. Yeah, he's dropped down the order. Adrian Fernandez is next up in sixth. Scott Pruitt is seventh. Gujeman's dropped down to eighth place as a result of his pit stop. Philip Aldi's ninth. Robbie Gordon's tenth. PJ Jones in eleventh. And Parker Johnston in the final point scoring place is twelfth at the moment. But just watch this battle up front as Moore, Vassar and Blundell battle it out over the remaining laps here to take the final victory of the season. The 500 mile of the second 500 mile race of the championship. Alex Zanardi won the other one at uh, Michigan and Mark Blundell finished very, very well up there. He's going to be on the podium again here if it all comes to plan, but is he going to be able to grab second position from Jimmy Vassar in the remaining laps? Just watch Greg Moore picking his way through the traffic, always aggressive through the traffic. He won't really give much opportunity for Vassar to close up behind him, and Mark Blundell just needs to try and use the traffic to close up on Vassar himself. We've got news of a black flag for Christian Fittipaldi, who's running in ninth place. We're not yet sure why he's been shown the black flag, but Christian Fittipaldi's going to have to come into the pits. That's a big disappointment after running uh, throughout the race. Well, in fact, it's fluid. Problems, problems for Greg Moore. He's slowed down. What's happening? Greg Moore suddenly slowed down. But there is Neil Mickerite, general manager of Players Foresight Racing. Oh, oh, a blown engine. It's a blown engine for Greg Moore. Moore goes out of this race in disastrous fashion with just 10 laps to go. And Jimmy Vassar is not being passed by Mark Blundell. Blundell now leads this race. Mark Blundell is going to come across the line with just nine laps to go. And it's all changed again as Blundell now is in front of Jimmy Vassar. And Greg Moore goes out of it. What drama we're seeing in the final laps of this 500 mile race it started with drama it's finishing the same way and mark blundell now has got the chance of taking his third win of the year if you're on a major that engine blowing up i mean we see greg moore coasting in front of us dead stick as they say over here the major yellow flags didn't come out last lap round for the leaders were 36.5 they saw that engine blow they lifted off instinctively and mark blundell didn't he went past jimmy vassar and he had now has the lead and less than 20 less than 10 laps to go Jimmy Vassar hasn't given up on this yet, though. He's still pushing to keep up with Blundell. And we've seen that Jimmy perhaps has had the slight edge throughout this race so far. But Mark Blundell has got a scent of a third victory this year. And he is going to hold on to this as hard as he can. Remember that disastrous race in Rio last year on the Oval Track when he had that horrendous accident. What a story this would be if he could come back to take victory in the final Oval race of the year. And as he's chased by Jimmy Vassar, he's opened up the gap over the last couple of laps. No doubt about it. It was 1.4 seconds the last time they crossed the line. Let's see what it is this time. There's no doubt that he's gradually easing away from the American. 234 miles an hour last time around. That's why 31.268. That is flying. Seven laps to go for Mark Blundell. So after winning in Portland and winning in Toronto, is this going to be a chance for Blundell to take his third win? Or are we going to see problems intervene? We've seen tyre problems for Gujamin. Does that mean that the Pac West setup is hard on the tyres, that it won't quite last the distance here? We've seen an engine failure from a Mercedes-Benz engine, that of Greg Moore, same kind of engine as Blundell. He puts a lap on Gilles de Ferran. That shows you how far Gilles de Ferran has dropped back in recent times. In fact, his position now is still in fourth place, but he's now gone a lap down. Adrian Fernandez has moved up to fifth with the demise of Greg Moore. Mauricio Gutemann has moved up to sixth, so he's still going to salvage something from today's race after a disappointment of that blistered tyre towards the end. But let's just hope that all four tyres on Mark Blundell's car are in good shape and they can see him through these remaining five laps. The gap 1.8 seconds as they last crossed the line and Blundell chasing, chasing this victory. Can he really do it on the California Speedway? The first race for the cart 
contenders on this racetrack and it's proved to be a, a race full of drama at the beginning it's settled down quietly in the middle but right now we're seeing a tremendous race and Jimmy Vassar I don't think is keeping up at all you can see him disappearing in second place Mark Blundell has got this one as long as nothing goes wrong yeah the gap's about the same 1.8 seconds between those two the last three or four laps actually, in fact and also sounding sick was Gilles de Ferreira. he is a lap down he is still in fourth position ahead of Adrian Fernandez and Mauricio Gujamin but that engine definitely off song that Honda V8 engine not as crisp as, crisp as it was not too long ago problems for Gilles de Ferreira. Well, he's had a, a bad end to the race. Look at this, Bruce McCaw down in the pit lane uh, is watching one of his cars coming around, leading a race yet again. They hadn't scored any race victories as a team coming into the 1997 season, but they've proved to be the class, really, of the season. They may not have won the Drivers' Championship. Alex Zanardi's brilliance on several occasions was a bit too much for them, but as a team, they've done a superb job with both of their drivers taking victories and really being the class team of the year. And now Blundell has just a couple of laps to go. He'll be looking for that white flag next time around that signals just one lap. You can see the race average over 220 miles an hour. That's the high speeds that we have here. Three laps to go, rather. So it's uh, one lap plus. And then the white flag, so the Omega timing uh, system that we've got here is just a lap per behind at the moment, so still the three laps to go. And Blundell, can he finish off these six miles and retain the advantage he has at the moment over Jimmy Vassar? Still some traffic to deal with. That's always a concern. He gets past Dennis Vitolo without any problem. And Jimmy Vassar now still has that same target. We've still got quite a, car, a few cars running. Surprising, really, that we haven't seen more cars retire from this race. But reliability has been very impressive here today. The battle up front, though, still all about Blundell and Vassar. There goes Jimmy Vassar, they're coming out of turn four, they're onto the front straight away. There is a white flag, Jim Swintel gives to Mark Blundell and Jimmy Vassar in second place. The gap between them is less than a second, 0 0.963 seconds, but just two miles to go now for Mark Blundell. It looks as though he's heading for his third win of the season, and it's on an oval track. He's won on a road course, he's won on a street track, and this time he's going to win on an oval. It's a super speedway. It's a track that he has not felt comfortable with in his career over here in the last two years but he has beaten it on this occasion he is going to come through to take the victory coming out of turn number four for the final time and he wins it Mark Blundell takes the win here for you fantastic performance from the Englishman Jimmy Vassar finishes in second place third position Adrian Fernandez finishes in third place in the Lola that is just an amazing story as well Fernandez taking third position fourth place for Maurizio Guterman so he recovered well to take fourth in the end with Bobby Rahal coming home in fifth position Gilles de Ferran in sixth then Scott Pruitt we're waiting for him to come through in seventh Robbie Gordon eighth Philippe Aldi ninth PJ Jones in tenth Johnson eleventh and Max Pappis in twelfth But Mark Blundell it is who brings the car down into the pit lane and for all his uh, fans who've been watching him on Eurosport throughout the season, what a wonderful way it is to finish off his uh, 1997 campaign. Absolutely brilliant. He just stayed out of trouble here today. OK, he picked up the pieces when other people had trouble, but that's what driving a 500 mile race is all about. Staying out of trouble, looking after the equipment, getting the car set up right, keeping a handle on the car all the way through the race. And that really shows that Mark Blundell has sorted it out and that is just such good news for him and for the team and just look at the delight down there in the camp great stuff from Mark Blundell he of course scores uh, 20 points courtesy of that and Jeremy I think that moves him up a few he places. does significantly up to sixth place in the final standings that's three positions there for Mark Blundell that's a significant amount of money in the PPG Cup points awards at the end of this season so what a brilliant drive by Mark Blundell he, uh, he didn't he didn't go fast until he needed to go fast and that was towards the end of this race and uh, boy he deserved it the first uh, overall victory is, is he a happy camper or what <laughs> that is quite something I mean we think back to that race at Rio when he suffered those awful injuries to his ankles when he hit the wall they had a, a brake failure uh, on that car and Mark Blundell had nowhere to go but into the wall and there's Mark Jr his son who's out here as well this weekend and uh, was well, just fantastic stuff great to see that and surely that's got to be one of his most satisfying wins 
of the year, even though he's had uh, two great victories already this year, to, to win on an oval after all the trouble he's had. Just a fabulous achievement. And uh, certainly all his fans watching back in Europe will be just... A